Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Evangelist David Bybee has been called and anointed by God to fulfill the scripture. Now, let's join Evangelist David Bybee in the worship service at the Crossroads Community Church, Carthage, North Carolina. Anyway, those joining by television, get ready to have church with us. Uh, this is Crossroads Community Church. We're out here in the middle of nowhere, but we love the Lord, and uh, he loves us, believe it or not. He loves us because he continually blesses us, and uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to get them out, wipe the dust off of them. Let's get ready to have church together, and uh, God has done so much for this little church, and I'm going to share a few things with you today and get a pencil and piece of paper and have it ready because I know you're going to want to write down this information because you're going to want to be a part of it. But right now, I want you to put your hands together, make them welcome as they come to sing for the glory of the Lord. That's the only place you're going to find peace is at the altar. It's the only place you can find peace. It's learning the Word of God. And I want to read a few scriptures. And as I was talking a little earlier, I was listening to this preacher this morning. And I very seldom ever do this. But I was the first time he had come on this particular station or channel. And I was flipping through it. And Brother Marvin and I were sitting there just listening to some of the words because the words he was saying didn't come out of the Bible, not the Bible that I carry. And he, was, he told us what chapter and verse. So I went to the chapter and verse. And, and when he got to verse 37, he said, Which of you or who, who, who of you, whom of you? He didn't say which because the Bible says which. He said, By taking one thought can add one hour to your life. Mine said, which of you by taking thought could add one cubic to your height? 
A cubic's 18 and a half inches. How many of us can take thought and add 18 and a half inches to our height? What's that got to do with one hour to your life? I know we can't do that either. We can't add life. But that's not what the Bible says. And just listening to this gentleman teach out, out of his Bible that he was teaching out of, it was ridiculous the things that he was saying. And, you know, the people that don't know the Word of God are listening to this ridiculous messages and leaving out so much that's important. And, and so anyway... It bothered me because I listened to it, and the more I listened to it, the more upset I got because I happened to know this pastor. I happened to know him, and, and, and uh, uh, you do too. I ain't going to call his name. For, uh, and uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. I'm just going to read a little bit here, and then I'm going to go to some other verses. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... They are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For well, I reckon that the suffering of this present time, the sufferings of this present time, are not worthy to be compared with the glory we shall, which shall be revealed uh, in us. And I know I've read this many, many times lately. But it comes back to the sufferings. It comes back to the sufferings uh, of the children of God. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And, you know, the, the, the reason I jumped on this verse is because everywhere that I have read, and I may be wrong, and if I am, I'm sure somebody will call me and tell me that I'm wrong, and that's fine. Or someone in here can tell me I'm wrong, but everywhere I've read, in the, the New Testament, the New Covenant that I live under, all the people that served God were tried and tested. All of them suffered persecutions. And, and I say that because it's to strengthen us. We are to be strengthened. We are to, to be able to stand against the wilds of the enemy. We are to be able to stand against the enemy and, and still place our trust in the Lord, even though we're hurting, even though we're being persecuted and put down. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight in glory. Our light afflictions. You know, John the Baptist came preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He lost his head. He was cast in prison, first of all, for preaching the good news. Not doing anything wrong, but just standing up for Jesus. The disciples, James was slain with the sword in the church. He was pierced through James the Apostle. The disciple was killed with a sword inside the church. Peter was nailed upside down on a cross, crucified. All the disciples suffered persecution. All of them suffered violent deaths except John the Baptist, or John the Revelator. And they put his eyes out because he proclaimed the gospel and stood on the word of God. But, you know, we have churches today that believe and really stand on and believe that if you're serving God, you're not supposed to have to go through anything. 